Welcome to the David Preston blog number two. As you can see, I'm not David Preston. We've been trying to get this intro film for about half an hour now, and he just won't wind his rods in. You can see we literally stood here two seconds ago. His rod's gone off again. So I'm doing the intro this time for his vlog. So you can see, I think that's like the third or fourth fish he's had now. We've literally been here half an hour. I've had two, but I've done the obliging thing like cam the cameraman Tom's asked me to do. I've wound the rods in. David refusing to do that, so I thought I'd just do a little intro for you this time. Okay, well, um, I'm going to try not to say anything rude about Tom Scully, who's the cameraman here at the moment. Uh, we're at Larford Lakes. We've got two rods out. I'm trying to catch uh, the bigger carp using sumos, because they're a big bait, the same size as boilies, but more attractive. Um, and uh, I've got two rods out, but I'm seriously considering winding one in because it just, it's just silly. It's within every three or four minutes, I'm getting another one on. Most of them are about like this, four or five pounds, three, four, five, six pounds, something like that. And then the occasional one's about 16, 17. I get a lot of bites. I do get a lot of fish because I've been using this stuff uh, and I seem to have honed in on what works. So this is what I do. I'm using method feeder. I use the squeeze ready method feeder mix because it's just ready to use you don't have to do anything it just comes out and it's right to use and it's dead simple what i do though is i it's got sensei in it already which is like really attractive to fish but i do like to increase the amount of attraction so always put some of the one form or another of liquid sensei in and try and reduce the amount of uh, uh, stuff that goes on my hands not too successfully <laughs> Um, I, I tend to mix it up with this, so I'll go like that, mix it up, and there's going to be a massive amount of uh, sensate comes off that now. You can see it's going to be a little bit redder. You can see all the bits there that are going to give off a lot of attractant. And then I'm using sumos, I'm using them like boilies, so I'm, I'm casting them out. These are sumo white. Uh, they're very attractive, much more attractive than boilers because they give off food and attractants all the time. They're quite, quite softish, but they're big, so they select out the little fish. And I think I've got one on, but I'll ignore it just a second. So you can use these just like they are, but <laughs> uh, I tend to uh, add some more liquid sensate. A little bit of yellow. I might make it orange. I quite like orange today. So just a few drops of, oh, bit too much, and shake them all up. I don't know whether you can see see that. Whoop. And I like them really, really wet because as it goes through the water, it gives a lot of attraction out right in the column of water, all the way down to where you, where your hook bait is. And I use a method feed. I mean, look at those. Whoops. Absolutely fantastic. So a bit later on, I'll, sh I'll show you what I actually do with the method feeder. I think I've got uh, a bit of interest here. I don't know quite whether they're on or not, but there's two rods with something going on. So I'm going to go and have a look. Well, Mr. Stone, would you say this technique get bites? Um, just a few. I don't think you should ever do this on a filming day again because I haven't been able to do any bloody work yet. <laughs> well, here we are at Larford. Don't know what the date is, but it's near the end of September. It's 18 degrees C. I'm absolutely roasting. 
uh, warm wind, I want to chuck and I'm really enjoying it even though it's supposed to be work. How are you finding them? Yeah, it's a bit slower for me, but I'm still enjoying it. It's nice to get out of the office and the factory for a while. So, how much has Fuka changed since you came on board? Uh, pff, how long have you got? It's, <laughs> cha it's changed a lot, a hell of a lot, yeah. Um, I mean, product-wise, we've tripled the product range. Yeah, got it. Since March, April. Well, I was only ever going to do one product. Two in one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew how to do it this time round after press innovations and sonar baits and everything with 6,000 product lines or whatever it was. Well, I'm going to keep it simple, but it didn't happen that way because the anglers and the shops want certain things mm. and you have to go with, with what they want. Yeah. Thanks. It's been hard work. Yeah, it's been good though. It's like you said, you know, we listen to the to, to anglers' needs and we sort of react to that really, don't we? You know, there's a lot of products that have come into the range since I started that have come from feedback, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I, just, I just love it when, when the big boys, because we're little boys now, um, the big boys don't listen and they don't, they don't innovate what is needed to be innovated. And it looks like I'm going to get another fish on. <laughs> to, oh, uh, rejected one, that one. Yeah, so I love it because I, I think there's plenty of room for companies like ours to grow and grow and grow and grow until we're really annoying everyone else. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like you said, the feedback from anglers is key. We know we're releasing the right products. We give them what they want. Uh, they're also a part of that through the... Fuka Anglers Facebook group, which you started. Yeah, and, um, and we're going to make, we're going to actually f uh, almost formalise that process where we're going to be asking them what their opinions are on products because uh, uh, we've got a lot of uh, prototypes ready to actually get out there, but I'll, I want feedback. So within the Fuka Facebook, Fuka Anglers Facebook, we're going to uh, formal, formalise a system where we're asking them questions all the members uh, and then on that basis with that feedback we'll develop them further and then uh, with more feedback we'll pick a few out and then we'll launch them in a small way and and we'll actually you know send a few out which is what we do all, all the time anyway send new products out to uh, uh, the members and uh, get more feedback and then by next year we'll have a whole load more for you to tackle deal with yep. cope with yeah wherever yeah no, it's all good. It's all good. You know, it's like you said, it's fine because we know we're going to be bringing the right products to market that anglers yeah. actually want to use. Yeah. So, yeah, onwards and upwards for next year. What's been your favourite moment, and What's been your favourite time in the last 12 months? God, that is a difficult question to answer, to be honest. Um, I think probably launching the dyes, the Sensate dyes, because it was the it was the first product launch of the year. David's definitely going to get another bite in a minute. <laughs> it was the first product launch of the year. Uh, it was the first product launch that I'd sort of been involved with, um, and it just absolutely exploded. You know, it was relatively cold. I think it was April time when we launched the the dies. Um, it was still really cold then, so there wasn't a lot of anglers around. But it kind of showed me how valuable the Facebook forum the facebook group is because you know that that group was so influential in developing the product testing the product giving us the feedback and then actually seeing it be like a huge success like it like it has been this year i think that sort of that was sort of the sort of seal of approval for me that you know this this model that we've got works you know and that that's carried on all year with the other four or five product launches that we've had i think that's sort of been the the best moment for me so far yeah and what about the next 12 months? What, um, what do you reckon? What, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts? Where do you think we'll be in 12 months' time? What do you think? Uh, I think uh, <laughs> we'll probably triple the turnover. I think, you know, with, with these, with the Sensate liquids and the squeeze-ready pellets and the squeeze-ready uh, ground baits, we're going to go into more ground baits. 
it's what it's what anglers want yeah. and uh, it's it opening all sorts of doors we've, we've now we've now got accepted oh. gotta go and get this <laughs> right i'm coming through could be ready that one sorry mate there we are right david the net is yours the wrong side for you isn't it sorry there you are well, i know you're doing it on purpose and slip you another five to try and make it harder for me but it won't work you're not competitive, are you? No. As long as I win. Look at that, another nice fish. Hmm. This one's ready as well. Oh. Um. <laughs> Multi netting going off here, folks. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> Do you know, it's unbelievable that this is happening because I was reading somebody on Facebook last night saying Sensei definitely don't work and Fuka's rubbish. So you must be fishing with something else, I reckon. You need to put an up on still, though. That's about the only other requisite. It's a nice word for a Monday, Monday afternoon. Requisite. Right. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, in case anyone wonders, I've been using red Sensei. The so red right hand and all that. Right, I'll unhook this one first. It's a lovely condition, aren't they? So, I'm getting an awful lot of bites here, so I must, something about what I'm doing must be right. That there is a method feeder, it's a pressure innovations one, so I can take it off. They're the best ones, I think. I've squidged in a load of this uh, squeeze ready ground bait, because I don't have to mix it up. Uh, but there's a particular way I use it when I'm using big baits. I, I like to have, when I'm fishing for uh, bigger fish, I like to have something that lasts a while in the method feeder. Otherwise it's like, you know, one shot and it's done. You know, if, 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 you, do it, if you do it in the proper match fishing way, where you're fishing for instant bites straight away, you, you do it so that the whole lot is, is dissolves within a minute at the most. It's ready for a fish to come along, suck it all in. But I think in, in reality for when you're trying to get the bigger fish, you want to give them a chance to get in because they're not always the first fish to get there. I'm, so I'm using a big bait, which is a Sumo, 14 mil, two in one. And I'm using um, like a paste that I've, I've made by squidging in all this squeeze ready stuff. Uh, but if you do that with a big bait and you push that in, it gets stuck in. And then the poor old fish has got to keep on trying to, and trying and trying to get it. So what I do is I've got a particular technique which works. And that is, I squeeze it all in, so I've got paste, look at that. If I put that in there now, it'll never come out. So then I put some loose stuff in, and then I put that on top of the loose stuff, so it's protected from getting stuck to the paste at the bottom that I've made. Pour some more of that on, pour some more on, and squidge it in. As you can tell, I'm very messy and I don't bother with moulds and things like that. Cleaned up a little bit. Squeeze it quite hard. It's got to withstand uh, phew, 60 meter cast, 12 foot of water, and that, and that will fall apart quite quickly. And there you have it. I know that that great big hook bait will come free. That's a big one, isn't it? I'll take it. Oh, yeah. And it's definitely not a brave. If it is, it's a record brave. Again, that little change, there's another one on uh, yellow carpos. Is it? He definitely seems to be liking that brighter bait. It's interesting because David's caught while covering them uh, sumos in like fluorescent colours, hasn't he, as yeah, well? Yeah, Red and right. yellow. I mean, the water looks quite clear just in the edge, but you, know, you can't see too far out, so it, it, it could just be a bit of colour down there. Yeah. Like a fairly decent one, there. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the biggest one of the day, that I think, isn't it? That's that's I reckon that could be the biggest one of the day. Yeah, you can see that bright bait in its mouth. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Go on. Go on. Go on, it's a shuffler. There we go. Look at that. Not 
How big's that? That's got to be. Another mirror again as well. All the bigger fish I've had down here have been mirrors, and all the bigger fish David's had down there have been commons. It's true, that isn't it? With literally spitting distance apart. Oh, aye. Oh, yeah. Yep, there we are. Not a bad one. I reckon it's about eleven pound, but David thinks it's a bit bigger. I think it's twelve. Twelve? Okay. Well, we're not going to bother weighing it, but it's a nice scaly one. That. Right. So I'll just talk you through what I'm doing today on both rods. So I'm doing something slightly different on each one. So that right hand rod where I've just had that mirror, uh, keeping it dead simple. I've just got a couple of bags of Fat Boys with me black ones today and I'm just throwing them in by hand it's literally just an underarm cast of where I caught that fish so it's nice and simple um, the rig that I've got very very simple it's just a lead clip set up bog standard lead clip two ounce of lead 10 pound mono hook link little size 8 hook and a boily pellet on on the hair very very simple and what I do with these boily pellets before I um, put them in is I'll unscrew the pot and I'll douse them with a little bit of natural sensate liquid as well, just to sort of boost them up um, even more. You've seen what David does with the sumos when he absolutely drenches them in sensate liquid. Same kind of theory with this. Um, seems to work an absolute treat. You get bites a hell of a lot quicker. So again, nothing fancy there. Very, very simple. Gets bites very quickly. Now on the next rod, which is fished a little bit further out. It's probably about 30 or 40 yards out into open water. I've got the exact same setup there with the rig, the lead, the lead clip, everything like that. <clears throat> but what I'm doing on that one is I'm actually molding something round that lead. Th th these leads are absolutely perfect for molding things around. You can see the kind of half lead, half method feeder. So they'll really take bait on there nicely. So all I've got is I've got some fishery pellets in there, two mils. Now you might think they're a little bit small for me being a, a sort of carp angler and carp fishing today, but the thing is, this is also a match lake just with huge fish in there. They see these micro pellets a lot. So I want to give them something that they're familiar with, but I want to mix it with something else as well. So what else I've got is a bag of squeeze ready method mix, just a small bag. Again, we've only got the afternoon, so we don't need loads. So I'll just pour all that in there as well. Like so, no prep needed with it being squeeze ready. It's literally ready to use out the bag. I'll just give that a good sort of mix around, get them pellets and that method mix all mixed together nicely. And then what I can do from there is very quickly, I can just squeeze it like so and it will all bind together nicely. But like I said, what I'm doing with, with these leads, I'll show you on this particular one, I'm literally just using it like a method feeder. So I'll just get a little handful and just squeeze a little pile of it in like that. A little bit more, nice and tight, like so. And there you go. Very, very easy, very, very simple. Packed with Sense8. Might even put a little dollop of liquid on top of it as well if I feel the need to, but I've not needed to so far. So again, no need to complicate things, no need to spend a fortune. Nice and simple. Right, I've had loads of carp today. Uh, I've had quite a few smaller ones, and well, I, I love them all. I like getting bites, I like action. Uh, I've been using these sumos, drenched in sensei, as you know. It tracks all the fishing. Sometimes, though, uh, 
fish that I don't want to catch, like you know, two, three, four pound bream, uh, three, four, five pound carp. Uh, sometimes, if I think there's bigger fish there, I want to get through to them. And so, they, what happens is they whittle away at this. They love it so much they just keep on sucking away at it and make it smaller and smaller and smaller until they get it into their mouths. And then I get a bite and get a small fish. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use these um, boiler wraps, paste wrapped boilies. They're, they're basically the boilies are hard so they can't get whittled away by what I think of as nuisance fish when I'm trying to catch the big carp. And, uh, but they give off loads and loads of flavour uh, because they're wrapped in sensate paste. So I'm, I'm going to be using those, they're hard. Uh, on a hair rig obviously and but I'll still carry on feeding with these to pull the fish in big time. No! <laughs> You've got to be good to do that. Oh, impressive. There we go. Good way to finish the day. I think you've well and truly wiped the floor with me, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, I think Tom was right. Though. You're definitely the mop head on the end of the, the state. It's, it's, it's not quite fair. It's, 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 um, he, he, he likes public humiliation, David, doesn't he? He did it to yeah. me last week and he's done it to you yeah, this week. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. A bit of a theme, a recurring theme. Yeah, yeah. yeah I never realised it about myself. Well, I, I had to let him win, that's my excuse. He might not let me out the factory again, so. No, no bonus. <laughs> yeah, good day. Very good day. You've got the bigger fish there, look. Look yeah. at the size of that. Yeah, nice fish, that. Very yeah. nice. It has been a good day today. Larford Lakes, not far from Starport which isn't far from Bewdley, which isn't far from Kidderminster, which is in the West Midlands. Not too far away from Sheffield and Tom Scully. <laughs> Get them fish back then. <laughs>